Now, if you're just tuning in, we're discussing what the work, um, the future of workspaces should look like and how this would impact work life and businesses. Now, please let us hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join this conversation. Tweet at us at Wayshaka1 with the hashtag Wayshow or send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081 803 right, so before we went on a break, you know, I was just going to ask you that for a young person watching, right, you know, and they want to have this corporate... Um, corporate presence without spending so much. I believe that's what you're there for, to help them. So this community, right, is there a cost to it, to join in the community and all of that, and what should the person be looking at? Uh, I mean, so, yes, there is a cost. <laughs> but there are minimal costs. Okay. And there are sensible costs, too. So, um, I mean, I, I want to say we're probably, especially now with the whole pandemic and all the setbacks that have even happened in 2020 we've tried to work with a lot of the startups that are in our space and mm. even just tried to encourage more startups to you know to join our community and uh you know for instance the nomad plan that uh timmy spoke about is as little as i think ten thousand naira a month okay yeah so we try to make that as affordable as possible and then even our flex space so we have this plan it's called the hot desk and currently we have two locations. We're opening up more locations within Lagos and potentially in uh, the northern Ibado. part of <laughs> And Ibadan, <laughs> funny enough, you, you mentioned Ibadan. Ibadan is, is, is in our line of sight. Okay. I just didn't want to comment, yes, but yes, Temi, Temi is actually is quite, zone, quite aware. Well, that but there's a hot zone Ibadan right now. is actually, a, a, because it's literally less than yeah, an hour and a half away from Lagos. Hmm. And you find that you know, what's it going to cost you? Once you have access to your data provider and it's solid, why not? Why not live in Ibadan? And you can come to Lagos, especially if you don't really have anything you're doing in and Lagos in particular. the cost of living is cheaper there. It's cheaper. Yeah, the cost of even for you acquiring the property is cheaper. So it means that the cost of getting Let's, let's even worry space. less about our own business. Let's <laughs> even think more about the entrepreneur, you, yeah. right? So the entrepreneur living in Ibadan, that it doesn't have to pay the high rents in Lagos mm -hmm. and you know has access to an affordable co-working space mm -hmm. and is also earning so they're working remote now so most of these especially if we're thinking about the tech uh, tech industry mm -hmm. these guys are working for people in different parts of the world they're earning in FX you know so it's it's a it's a good deal you the know win -win. and you can come to Lagos at the weekend if you feel Lagos is <laughs> somewhere you want to be <laughs> Okay, so and you run away from the whole traffic. Exactly, you run away from traffic. So I was going to talk about technology, right? How do you plan to leverage technology for the future workspaces? You know, for the future. So, so I'm glad you mentioned that. So, part of our drive now is, and we've been working on that since uh, even before the pandemic hit. So, trying to strengthen our digital uh, uh, service services that we're providing. So. Part of what we're doing is also redesigning our, the workstation application, uh, which will eventually introduce the mobile version of the app where you can download on iOS and eventually on Android. Mm -hmm. And the idea for us is that uh, we want to be able to create that bridge, connect people on the digital side, and then also provide all these additional services. So for instance, someone that's subscribing to a Nomad plan, we want to be able to even you know, create an avenue where they can set up a business maybe potentially open up a, a business account and run their business remotely without actually having to go into a physical location, yeah. only, on, only if they need to. And then also creating uh, a digital platform that allows teams to work remotely as well. So those are some of the key areas I think we're going to try and harness on the digital side, especially as the world moves more towards the remote work. I mean, it's not to take away from the fact that co-working is going to be important because a lot of companies are now starting to do things like, okay, employees come in two, three days in a week, and then the other couple of days, either you work from home or if you feel like working from a specific co-working space, we would also pay for those spaces so you can get access to uh, uh, those resources, those yeah. infrastructure that is needed for you to actually get your work done efficiently. So, you know, as, as we move uh, forward, our digital side is going to be part of what really, really connects uh, our community. Hmm. So I was watching, was it, uh, I can't remember if it was CNN now or one of the international stations where you are going to be in a room 
where you wear the bikini. Oh, the, v, the, the, the VR, the virtual the reality. VR, yeah. Where you just go and you're already in the hall, uh, what's it called, in the space with a lot of... I mean, how, how cheap is that kind of technology? If, for instance, mm. we want to now still mm. factor in COVID, okay, maybe the vaccine is not here in Nigeria and all of that. Do we see those kind of workspaces coming to reality for us in the So, so in I, the think, I think, obviously, with, with the pandemic and with, the, with, with what's currently happening, you're going to see a lot of acceleration in a lot of new technology products that can help you know enhance and you know that you know it's it's like the, it's like a nuance when you think about words like social distancing because you think about the social is the idea of social is come together, together. but social <laughs> so there, there are a lot of things that are changing now mm. so things are going to be accelerated you know you know like you mentioned the vr equipment it's expensive now probably an average vr equipment is a thousand dollars which is equivalent to 500,000 you know mm -hmm. it's not going to be easily accessible for people but over time with technology and as people are starting to increase the demand for products like that you're going to see that the pricing is going to start to scale down mm -hmm. there's going to be a lot more uh, flexibility for people to access uh, tools like that okay so Jennifer tell me take your question please Je um, Jennifer check for your question go ahead tell me all right okay so the question here is from Angela, and she says, does Farid see a time in the future where public officers will subscribe to co-working spaces? Public officers now, not private individuals. You see a time in the future where that will happen. <laughs> if I like that question, you know, because I was going to ask that. Public, um, public officers. I was going to ask the public officers, um, what's it called? Um, for instance, if we want to curb the population issues and traffic issues if we have um hubs like scattered around the five geo geopolitical zones, zones in lagos don't you think that will kill you know all this heavy traffic on the road and all of that people just go and walk from that place you don't it's, need to travel from Egbeda all the way to vi to come to office it's interesting <laughs> that you timmy asked this question because we've actually done some research and sent a reports on what you've just mentioned. Lagos State has 20 local governments. Hmm. And um, there was a time that there was a plan to build a Yaba ICT hub. Yeah. And, you know, part of what Workstation proposed then was that, yes, all well and good. We're going to build this big, fantastic um, 10,000 plus square meter facility. But we also need to think about how people are going to get to this facility. So we need to make sure that we have strategic sort of like uh, smaller hubs mm -hmm. or smaller spaces that are available for people within different local governments or different communities to have access to. So that also helps develop those communities as well as reduce the impacts and pressure on people having to come to the yeah. master uh, or the sort of like the so, HQ, yeah. so yeah. to speak. So, I mean, but, you know, again, as the world has seen so many things, you know, 2018 was when we started seeing the economic. No, they decline. had not seen the future now. now so, we know, so, so, <laughs> so, 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 COVID is COVID is different. So, remember that we started seeing a bit of an economic decline, 2018, yeah. leading into 2019. We we're a bit optimistic about 2020, then the pandemic happened. So, but I think um, you know, as things start to stabilize again, um, those conversations will be revisited. Um, I mean, I was lucky to be part of those uh, committees and those. Uh, uh, those technical committees that were working on putting that together. But I think um, this year you should see some renewed optimism about, you know, making Hopefully. life better for, especially for the businesses, the young businesses that are trying to create the future. Yeah, because I honestly don't see a reason why I, if, if I have a space, you know, to walk very close to my house, I don't need to travel all, all the, the way. way. Yeah, you know, so um, Jen uh, Jennifer, take your question. So Lyle said, I am a subscriber and I would like to say Workstation is an awesome working space. Oh. My colleagues from other African countries loved it. Okay. Oh, so that's fantastic. Right. From so other African countries. Okay. African. Ah, okay. So, but is the person, for, is, are they from Nigeria or they yeah, just, they had, oh, okay. Nice. Oh, they nice, they nice. love your space. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. We're, 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 we're trying to improve. We're, we're trying every day, working hard at it, hmm. you know. And by the way, we're probably one of the... You can it standing on... Um, Tell me, you were saying? Tell me. Yeah, I was just teasing him. The way he was responding to it, I said he was just taking the compliment so humbly. <laughs> <laughs> no, but the truth is that was it's it, you know with everything, you know you can never feel uh, as though you've um, 
you've accomplished. You have to continue to work hard. So our, our members are very important to us. So we, we, we don't take them for granted. So that's why for us, we're always on our toes. Our team is always on their toes. They're always trying to ensure that, you know, the, the, the space is running smoothly and the service delivery is, is up to par. So I saw this interesting, sorry, Jennifer, I think you have a question, Abi. Let me, I saw this interesting and I thought to bring it up. Um, I think it's from Adewale Yusuf. He's the Chief Executive Officer at Tech um, Talent QL. You know the... Okay, yes, yeah. he just started uh, Talent QL. So, He's yeah. moved to Ocean State yeah, to work so remote. He posted something. He said the next tech ecosystem will focus on co-living spaces, not co-working spaces. What do you think about that? Uh, again, I mean, we all tend to have our views, right? Yeah. Uh, so, so there's even this thing now uh, called workation. I don't know if you guys have heard no, of I've that. No, I've not so heard where of where people are now starting to, you know, take their work with them on vacation. So people, you know, just getting away and just still working while still living your life, right? Mm -hmm. So, yes, you're going to start to see a lot of people wanting to set up, like, their home office and, you know, you know, because of the pandemic. But I, I still feel like we're, we're a social being. Human beings are very social. We still need that. We crave that human interaction. So mm -hmm. as much as the pandemic scares us all and we want to, you know, definitely work in silos and it's important for us at this point in time so that we can stay safe and get past this moment, people are going to always want to be social. And you can look back in, at history after the 1912 pandemic, the Spanish mm -hmm. flu mm -hmm. pandemic, which industries took off the most? Hospitality. Mm -hmm. yeah. Why? Because Everybody people wanted wants. to get out. People wanted to hug people. People wanted to be to out. Travel. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's good that co-living would take a, a big slice of the market, but co-working, remote work, it's going to be here to stay. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. It's actually going to be here to stay because um, a lot of my tech friends some of their companies are telling them they would actually not ever come back to their companies. You're just going to work wherever you are. And then a lot of people are now looking at it like, okay, this year I'm going to take a vacation. It's not necessarily like what he said. It's not necessarily a vacation. You're just out of the country. It's a vacation. But you're still working. <laughs> so you're basically it's actually just, good. It's yeah, a real thing. If you Google you're it, you're actually workation. enjoying life. But you're working. Mm. I had some of my friends in, um, I don't want to mention the name of the company. Um, last, was it, la no, not last year. It was 2019. They all went to Egypt, about 30 of them. They were there. They went for the um, FIFA um, Cup. They did everything. They were working at the same time, and they were okay. having fun. Okay. I was just here like, wow, <laughs> guys. <laughs> so how do you see this impacting? Do you see smaller companies, um, you know, coming to... Uh, no, 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 not smaller companies, bigger companies rather. <clears throat> you know, just completely letting go of all those their yeah, workspaces because some of them just, <laughs> you know, everybody's at home technically. And instead of investing in those kind of big grand company, I mean, buildings, they would rather come to you in the future because they've seen that I can actually have, you know, uh, um, a limited number of staff working per time. So that, why don't I just go with workstation instead? So I think the market gains for the co working industry in that regard would be more focused on. Companies may not take, stop having their spaces in the grade A asset class buildings, um, but they might reduce some of that space potentially and maybe take on some adjacent space in other remote co-working spaces, thinking about looking at the demographic of their workforce and saying, okay, you know, we have a lot of people that work, that come to work from, say, the mainland. We have a lot of people that live in Lekki. Mm -hmm. I mean, looking at the Lagos State mm -hmm. landscape. I think I say, you know, let's just have strategic office space yeah, in yeah. places where people can easily have access to the same type of infrastructure that you Absolutely. can get at, at HQ, right? Mm -hmm. So, and that I think are where the gains are going to, to be. be for you. Yes. Absolutely. So as a venture capitalist, what kind of business are you looking to invest in? <laughs> <laughs> Let us start positioning our business. <laughs> I mean, I think for us, um, and you know, we've, we've invested in a few companies, and one of the key things that we've always looked for is you know, sound business idea one, and also investing in people. So you can invest in a good idea, but if the team driving that idea is not good enough to take it to where it needs to go, then you know, it it's more than likely happens that it doesn't work out. So we mostly invest in people. That's really mm -hmm. our, our key investment objective, making sure that the, the people that are behind those ideas are actually uh, 
top notch and are also wanting to make some sort of impact. So for us, it's people, the impact they're going to make, and the value creation uh, in that uh, segment that we invest in. Absolutely. Yeah? I think that's a fantastic way to wrap up. <laughs> Adi was trying to send us a message. He's in the UK, but he deleted his message. I don't know why. So we'll probably, <laughs> we'll probably see it later. Thank you so much, Fareed. Thank you guys for having me. Thank yeah, you. thank you, Jennifer. Thank you, Tammy. Where is she? It's thank you. Ooh, I was hoping to squeeze in a question. Quickly, but there's no time oh, yeah, quickly, one so minute. Fine. Okay, so I was saying that, Farid, what are you going to say to companies who still like to do things in the very conventional way? They still like to keep, you know, see their stuff every day. They still want to do these things because they're not trusting of new developments. What would you say to such companies? Uh, I think, I think the, those companies should realize that the future is already here. And, you know, in the next, say, I, I want to say five to ten years, you're going to find that the more attractive companies that people are going to want to go and work for yeah. are the companies that provide the type of flexibility that allow people to be who they are Absolutely. and just, you know, have that opportunity to self-develop, you know, because if you take away people's time, for instance, having them commute through traffic every day, you find that even the productivity you can extract from that, that particular person. person within your organization begins to diminish Absolutely. so i think when organizations start to think about people first hmm. then they they are now in the future that's well, my opinion we're going to be thinking about it <laughs> <laughs> and we are hoping to bring you back that's i mean we've really had a very fantastic conversation it's been I'll a be very insightful to, conversation to come back anytime thank you so much all right so ways was birthed from the need to impact and this year we are starting our csr focused on curbing unemployment so if you are a company um, and you have internship slots available to give to us, please would really love to, for you to partner with us. Then if you're, a, if you're a job seeker and you want to, you're willing to go for internship, you know, hopefully if they love you, they keep you as a staff, reach out to us and keep watching ways. This is going to be an all year round engagement. So tell your friends, tell people that are looking to, to find internship positions. I've been getting a lot of calls, what God will help me. <laughs> But this is the goal. The goal is to curb unemployment. But you have to start from a point of internship where you prove yourself that, yes, you know, this company really needs you. Now, today, it's been a very insightful conversation. Thank you again. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So in case you missed today's quote, here it is again. The word co-working won't be a word in the future. It will probably just be the way we work. So you have to be ready for it. We'll see you live tomorrow at 8 p.m. as we bring another great conversation to your screen. Enjoy. <laughs>